Hey guys, John Theron for Just My Tech, and in today's video, I'm going to go over two gimbals from Zhiyun, the Smooth 4 and the Smooth Q, so stay tuned. So what's your experience with vlogs? Who do you, what vlogs do you watch? Dolby Brothers, okay? <laughs> I watch Dolby Brothers. They're the Dolby Brothers and what can they do? Backflips. <laughs> hey guys, John Turner for Just By Tech and like I said, I'm going to go over the Smooth 4 and Smooth Q and kind of give you a breakdown of which gimbal is best for you. So I've had some time to spend with the Smooth Q and the Smooth 4. I originally got the Smooth Q first and then I got the Smooth 4. So the cool thing about both these gimbals is that they work on your smartphone. They help to balance out your video and give you that smooth cinematic feel. I have to say, both of these are great gimbals on their own, but it depends on what you're trying to film. Now, there are advantages and disadvantages depending on what you wanna do. So, by breaking it down, let me just go ahead and point out the pros to each gimbal. The Smooth Q first came on 2017, and it was a really nice smartphone gimbal. Actually, it was the second gimbal I had ever touched previously. Originally, I had the DJI Osmo Mobile that I tested, which was really nice and had a, I guess you could say a sturdier feel to it. The only thing is, for that sturdy feel, you were paying $300 just to utilize that gimbal. Whereas the Zhiyun Smooth Q came in under $200. I believe it came out for probably about 150 or less. And don't hide away behind the same old mask. But tonight I got the cool and I wanna go dance with you. So now we found on Amazon for roughly about $75 to $95 within that range depending on fluctuation. The cool thing about the Smooth Q is that it didn't have that sturdy feel of the Osmo Mobile, but it had all of the features and more. It has a 12 hour battery life and can charge other devices. Although it uses micro USB for its charging, you could stick a full USB-A into it and charge any device you have. Now, of course, it's not gonna be fast charging or anything like that, but, I mean, you're still able to charge your device while you're recording, first off, for its price. You can't really beat it. There's a lot of gimbals out there that compete or replicate the Zhiyun design, but not a lot of them can truly pick up on everything. It's the best bang for your buck gimbal, as well as it's a nice, versatile gimbal. It's easy to use, and it's kind of a plug-and-play situation. Once you mess around with it for a bit, you pretty much know how to use it. Okay, one moment, one shot. Now, with that being said, there are disadvantages to the Smooth Q. Although it allows you to charge devices, it only allows you to charge them at a slower pace. And yes, it's lightweight, but it does feel flimsy. It's very plasticky. I mean, it, it feels cheap, and it doesn't have soft touch or any rubberized grips, so it can become slick at times. It does have a quarter mount at the bottom, but it doesn't feel sturdy. It's just one of those things that you're just going to have to get used to. And the Zhiyun app, the Z Play app, it only got better, but it's still not even good. Object tracking does not work. I don't know if I've just not had the correct lighting settings, but it just doesn't work. I've got an example right here where it just went haywire on me and I had to try and turn off the app before the gimbal just went crazy and threw my phone or just banged up the phone against the, its own body. Now, along with that, the Zhiyun Z Play app only allows you to film in 30 or 60 frames per second. It will not allow you to film at 24 frames per second. And anybody who films with a cinematic look knows you need 24 frames per second. And it will limit what you want to record regardless if your phone can actually hit a higher frame. Huh? 
So you're kind of stuck with the app unless you use an app like Filmic Pro, which is an additional $15 on top of the purchase of the gimbal. So that being said, the Smooth Q is good, but it's good when you want a lightweight gimbal. You don't want to lug anything big and you just kind of want to do small to cinematic kind of feels. If anything, this is a perfect vacation gimbal. Now with that being said, now we have the Smooth 4. Somewhere else and where I lay in my bags. It's so hard to stay up and don't hide away behind the same old mask. But tonight I got the cool and I wanna go dance with you. So if you are in the mood, it's worth it. Point as a predecessor to the Smooth Q, but I'd actually say it's just a step above. It's not, they wouldn't be in the same category, although they're roughly about. 30 to 60 dollars apart from each other but the smooth 4 brings in a whole new list of functions now you've got the focus pulling wheel on the side which is generally used in true cinematic gimbals like the crane and i believe the dji ronin s where it allows you to get that feel of jaws where you're they're zooming in but you're pulling back so you've got a real kind of inception feel to it. It also brings functional buttons on the gimbal itself. So you have to spend less time touching the screen and more time holding and stabilizing the gimbal. Also, it allows you to create the same focus pulling effect directly in it. Now I believe it's called, oh it's focus pulling, but it kind of gives you an inception feel, which is really nice. I like the functionality and the body of the gimbal. It feels nice and sturdy. Now, of course, it definitely feels like it's made of plastic, but it's a good balance and it's got a good weight to it. On top of it, out of the box, you have USB type C and you can charge other devices with the gimbal itself. Also, out of the box, you do have a mini tripod and it's a decent mini tripod. If you were to purchase a mini tripod like this, roughly about $20 on its own. And it adds just a little balance to it. It equally balances out this gimbal really well. So with all the advantages, there are disadvantages. With the, the Smooth 4, it's a lot heavier. Although I was just talking about it being balanced, it definitely without the tripod, it feels girthy. That's what she said? It doesn't feel ergonomically made for you to hold straight up. It almost feels like you'd have to turn it, which other commenters and viewers have said has been the case. Along with that, the ZY Play app doesn't work as well as it should. It definitely feels more, it's more polished, but it definitely is not good. You could do the focus pulling directly from the app, but it starts out very janky or shaky in the beginning and then it starts to lose its focus. It's it's something that out of the box, if you plan on using it, you're gonna have to spend some time to get used to all the quirks with the app itself. Along with it, the object tracking does not work. I don't I don't know if it's the lighting. I don't know what the setup was, but for both the Smooth Q and the Smooth 4, it did not work. And in most uh, situations where I videotaped, it was going haywire. Along with that being said, the Smooth 4 actually is a really good gimbal. But you gotta be sure what you wanna use it for. The Smooth 4 is more of a cinematic device. This is taking your videos to the next step. This is more something that you plan on filming just, you know, you could be filming a birthday party, which is nice. Or you could be going on shoot and filming directly on shoot. And it gives you that feel and it's got a girth to it that allows you to keep the video stable. Now I will say with both of these gimbals, the sensitivity is a little high and could be taken down just a little bit. But with the Smooth 4, you definitely got more functionality. You've got a trigger that allows you 
to pan with your subject fully. Also, pan following. And then there's their action trigger, which allows you to pull and whip real quickly. This is more of the cinematic device that you want, if you want it. Now, if you had to choose between the two, that's a tough call. Depends on what you want to do. If you just want to get more cinematic or smoother video for your family videos, you can't go wrong with either one. But if price is a factor, I just go with the Smooth Q. Now, if you kind of have a, an obsession with technology and you may want to upgrade and you want to keep on stepping up your video game, then definitely I would go with the Smooth 4. Being that it's roughly a 30 to $60 difference in price, if you can fork out the money, I would go with the Smooth 4. Hey guys, let's get social. Hit me up on Instagram and Twitter. And as always, if you like these videos, go ahead, hit that like button, and always hit that subscribe button. Now, I'm John Teher for Just My Tech, and I'll catch you in the next. I'm John Teher for Just My Tech, and we're the Her family. We like to watch Dolby Brothers. Where'd he go? Sometimes I make this life.